Okay. Video on parole is called to order today is Thursday, February 16th, 825 a.m. My name is Brent Kelsey. I'll meet with Cheryl Knox and Ms. Bonnie Jackson will be uh, parole panel. Staff and support seat of the DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. The staff and support, please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Who are Williams. Williams, Oscar. Right, exactly. All right. Our remote location is, is it Washita? Are we at Washita? Mm -hmm. Yes, Washita. Please, staff and support, please introduce yourself. Uh, good morning, Deputy Marshall and Washita Parish. All right, thank you. We're ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. I'm on uh, Isla Alexander, DOC number is 503480. All right, Ollie, we're here for a parole revocation hearing. I'll read some uh, charges. You'll plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, not guilty with a statement. Ask us some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Can you read and write, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, do you have a parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? Yes, sir. That's your signature at the bottom. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, great. All right, Audley Alexander, DH Talk Sheriff's Office for battery of a dating, battery of dating partner strangulation. And on December 15, 2022, you pled guilty to three counts of battery of dating partner. You were sentenced on each count to pay a fine of $300 in cost or default 30 days and serve six months in a Washtenaw jail to run concurrently. How do you plead? Guilty, sir. Okay. Number 10. You're currently in the arrears $378 for the supervision fees, and your last payment was made on July 19, 2022, in the amount of 126. How do you please? Guilty, sir. All right, would you answer Ms. Jackson, please? Good morning, Mr. Alexander. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Ms. Alexander, you've been detained since August of Last year, is that correct? August 2nd? Yes, ma'am. That's the same date you were arrested for the um, battery of a dating partner? Yes, ma'am. And so you'd only been out about eight months before you um, uh, reoffended, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Um, before we get into the incident with your, was it your girlfriend or your ex-girlfriend? She was an ex-girlfriend. All right, before we get into that incident, tell us uh, what you have been doing from the time you made parole until the time you got came. Were you working? Were you in school? Were you reporting? Tell us what was going on um, for that eight months. Um, all right. Uh First day I was released, the next day I had a, a bad car accident where they had pronounced me dead. And then uh, St. Francis got me back to breathing and shipped me to Shreveport to have my surgery. And I, was, I wasn't able to walk until like, the last week of May. And, uh, but, I, but I kept going to uh, my, my physical therapist and doing the exercise so that I can get to walking. So as soon as I start being able to walk around on my uh, my walker, I signed up to go to school at Claude's Beauty School. And that's why I was going for the two months before I came to jail when I was able to walk. And uh, so your accident was in January. And when were you... Um... <laughs> How long were you incapacitated or disabled? Um, I, I wasn't supposed to walk for a whole year, but it was from Jan January, from January all the way into May. I couldn't get off the couch until the last week of May. Okay, and then you enrolled in school. Is that what you're telling? Yes, ma'am. Now, tell us about this incident with your ex-girlfriend. What happened? Um. All right, she got my phone cut off because I didn't want to be with her no more. And when I went went over there to confront her about cutting my phone off, I walked in the house to go wash my hands because I was playing with it. The hacky sack, the, the sacks that you throw in, in the hole, and I had dust all over me. And I went in to wash my hands and she jumped on my back. So as I turned around, my hand, you know, like brushed or scraped across the hill. And uh, 
she kept on going on and going on. And I'm like, why did you cut my phone off? Why did you cut my phone off? And she said, because you wouldn't come home. You wouldn't come home. And I said, you didn't have any business to cut my phone off. So I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Who was paying for the phone? I did. Are you sure it was in her name? She got it for you. So how could she set the phone off if it would be your name? They won't let you do that. The person who has the account has to make any changes. Yes, ma'am. She 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 it was in her name, but I was paying the bill to keep it on. Well, you went to court, you were charged with three counts of battery. Um, there were photographs of her injury that uh, police took. And when you went to court, you pled guilty to three counts of battery of a dating partner. Now, it was the same incident, um, stated three separate occasions, but it was three separate uh, incidences during that one uh, encounter. You pled guilty to those charges. Yes, ma'am, I did. I was at the time I was under the I was under the impression that if I went on ahead and pled guilty to a misdemeanor, that I can get my parole reinstated. But I found out later on that I couldn't. But the instant it, it was a my uh, lawyer told me that she had a picture of the the it was like a little swelling on the side of her face. But the other one, it was a she said that you did that I grabbed her, then she said that I threw her down to the floor. She said it, it wasn't no pictures or no evidence of the, the, the grabbing and the throwing to the floor. It was just a picture of a, a swelling on the side of her face by a glass. Well, uh, I read a statement that um, you made at some point in the parole off I think it was a preliminary hearing where you said it didn't happen that way and I'm going to leave years off my life just because she was mad at me. So whose fault is it that you're in jail right now? Oh, it's, it's my fault because from the start, I wasn't supposed to go over there. Exactly. So if you were not revoke today. Tell us what your plan would be. First thing I would go and uh, redo my redo my FASM so I can get back in school to continue getting my uh, barber fast cosmetology license and uh try to find me a night job too because I don't I, for me being in here I, I lost everything that I gained lost the roof that was over my head I lost my the, uh, my my car. I re I lost everything that I had gained in the uh, that little bit of my time that I was out. You know, so the the first thing I do is go back to go back to school, be signed back up to school, so I can finish getting you know finish my career, something I can be able to live off of without having to do other things like that brought me to jail before. You know, the the, the running the street stuff. Do you um do you have any children with the victim of the domestic uh the battery of the day department? No ma'am. Huh. Kelsey, that's all I have. Right now we're here from Miss uh Sheila Brown. You're on mute. Can't hear you on mute. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Okay, I think I got it. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, yeah, brief statement. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma brief okay. statement. Okay, I can speak as an instructor. I was an excellent student. I think you really need this. It's a born talent that I think he has, and I stand behind him in his education 100%. I can honestly say this. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you. All right, Ollie, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. Uh, I would. I would greatly. I would really appreciate it if if you would consider reinstating. Well, the board will consider reinstating me. You know, we we're not perfect. You know? We we mess up from time to time, but you know, I'm I'm truly on the, on the path of getting my life all the way together or staying out of trouble completely. No, this is my first time ever being released and really taking action on what I've been supposed to be doing as far as you know the, the barber industry. That right there, I got a real passion for it and it, it, it keeps me out of trouble. You know? And I feel like if you reinstate me today, that you, you won't regret with reinstating. All right, thank you so much. Self-care development. Jack. Alexander, the uh, are a violation of all uh, fabric. I believe that you serve almost uh, in prison uh, seven months. So, um, were making efforts to um, help with career. Um, I'm going to be do not vote, but to add a special condition of your supervision that you enroll them and complete a program and that you are to have no contact with victims in this case. Oh, Mr. Uh, All right, Ms. Renata. Um, Mr. Alexander, I do have some concerns about why you're coming. I, I do agree with uh, Mrs. Jackson. I will also <laughs> vote not for both with the same added special that she Ma'am, you, you said that you will prefer me to some special classes. That's what Mrs. Yes. Yeah. So I, I I vote as well. Do not revoke, but you'll have to attend a 26-week domestic violence prevention program. You can get uh, involved in that. You'll be involved in that. You'll have no contact with the victim at all. No contact. Uh, and then you'll continue your supervision. So three, three votes to do not revoke. You understand stipulation? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck to you. We'll adjourn at Washington Hall, 838. Thank you. All I can say is, holy cow, imagine getting locked. Sorry, he said the day he got out, he got into a car accident. That the day he got out, he got into a car accident that he was pronounced dead at the scene. Like, do you remember? The, that's how the hearing started. I'm just like blown away. Can you imagine you're locked up, you get out, you get into a car and then boom, you're, you're, you're in the hospital and you can't even walk. You go from like one like institution to another from one form of being locked up to another. That's just crazy. If you want to just like think about that, I, 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 I uh, and then they said that it, he, he wouldn't, it would be like a year till he walks, but he, he's, he started, obviously he's walking, I guess. And then he gets into the altercation with his girlfriend and, and I just, you know, I, 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 I we've seen too many cases where there are, girlfriends that make false allegations there are true allegations so just because i just um well he never claimed that it was false so it was real so let's let's put it that way actually i take it back because he's not claiming it was false he got in a fight and he choked her so that's <laughs> messed up um and it's scary if someone has
no self-control, where they know that they are going to get locked back up and have to wait, what, eight months, seven months just to have your revocation hearing again and the risk that you might have to fill, fulfill your entire sentence and you don't have the self-control and over a cell phone being turned off, like, it's scary. It, that is scary because what's what's going to happen next, you know? This is about self-preservation. Forget about just the idea that you don't touch a woman. You don't touch, you don't strangle someone, anyone. So that's scary stuff. But, you know, the board is saying that, look, you, which I, which is good, right? They're saying you'll get out, you'll take the courses when you're out. That's my understanding. So it's less expensive on a taxpayer. If he can't control himself while he's doing this, then he does belong locked up. So, like, those things make sense to me. You know, don't be a burden on the taxpayer. Uh, paying to have someone locked up, you know, just so that they'll be released later without... Here, so um, they should really have these classes for for everything for victim awareness. That you know you shouldn't keep someone locked up for another two years because you feel that they should take a victim awareness program because they were selling drugs into the community and you don't think that they understand why that's wrong. So you keep them locked up another two years to take a, a, a program. And I say two years because they have to reapply and they have to wait for the parole hearing and, you know, it takes time. Anyways, I, I digress again. Love to hear your thoughts on this. You know. But, but you do just have to hope that he doesn't hurt come back and hurt her. I mean, that, that would imagine if you, if she was re like, if he really choked her and it must've been pretty bad if he got what it was three, was it three, um, cases of it in the police report, one incident, but three, like, so you have to assume it was bad. That part is scary. But okay, anyways, I'll let you go.